And before we start, I recently published my first written novel on the Amazon, so if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description below. Okay, so, I think it's safe to say that Insomniac's recent run of Spider-Man games have been some of my favorites. I've played the first one too many times to count, and I found myself playing Miles Morales more than that. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about their latest installment, Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 is an underappreciated gem. It's not perfect. It's far from it, actually. Spider-Man 2 is a game that showcases everything wrong with the gaming industry. Companies continue to push out unfinished products. Anyways, without further ado, let's take a deep dive into why Spider-Man 2 is an unfinished masterpiece. Spider-Man 2 is essentially an expansion of the first two games. They completely reinvented their web swinging system, added a multitude of skins, and condensed and simplified their ability system, and actually made New York feel more lively and gave us more depth and meaningful side missions. I can definitely say I appreciate the game for these new installments, but where Spider-Man 2 succeeds, there's also still some places where it falls flat. Before I get into that, let's talk about some of the things I really appreciated with this game. The first thing being the open world traversal. The traversal in this game is so amazing that I found myself spending hours just swinging around the city in different suits and completing random crimes that popped up throughout the city. I also like how each Spider-Man has a unique style to them as well. Peter is a bit more basic and from his web swing you can tell he's more experienced in actually swinging with the goal. Miles? He's definitely still full of that exaggerated swagger. He has more tricks and dare I say more swinging animations than Peter. When it comes to swinging, I definitely prefer Peter over Miles, but I can see Miles being the objectively better person to swing with. Wingsuits can be both a blessing and a curse to this game. Some people may see it as lazy and others may see it as a nice improvement. My one worry about this was the fact that I wouldn't really need to web swing if I could just fly everywhere. And for the most part of the game, I didn't really face that problem. That's until I hit level 60. When I tell you swinging becomes obsolete with the wingsuit, I literally just turned into Iron Man, dude. It's insane. Another thing I enjoyed is the sandbox-like combat. Though the numbers of gadgets are limited, I still found myself enjoying the time I had while using them. My favorite gadget is definitely the upshot and web grabber, just the number of possible combos you can come up with. The new installment of Spider-Man's specific abilities was much needed. I like how you're able to customize your abilities to your specific playstyle. On top of that, I'll also mention the parry system, which is still a little strange to have in a Spider-Man game, but I'm a stickler for parry systems in video games. Insomniac put a lot of effort into the combat this time around, with moves like bouncing your opponent off of the concrete, slinging people into the walls, and even extending combos with your web swing kick thingy. Also, after playing this game, you can't tell me that these Spider-Men aren't killing people. In what world can you sledgehammer someone into the concrete so hard that they bounce from it? Um, yeah, no, that person would be dead, caved in skull, shattered bones, ruptured organ, busted black- ah! Speaking of combat, the bosses in this game are a step up from the previous two. Some of my favorites include Sandman, Scream, and Kraven being my number one. The Venom boss fight would have made it to my top three, but I feel like it could have been better, especially taking inspiration from that concept art in the cinematic trailer. It could have really been a battle that stretched across the city instead of in that one spot. Also, before I forget, the MJ missions. God, these missions were so fun. Oh my God. I honestly wouldn't mind getting a game that expanded on those mechanics. It's essentially just The Last of Us and I love it. Okay, with the game's mechanics out of the way, let's talk about some of the game's aesthetics, starting with the suits. Now, when it comes to Peter's suits, he's got a multitude of bangers. The same can't be said about Miles. I feel like they overcomplicated some of these suits, and some of them feel unneeded, like the black and yellow No Way Home suit, the stealth suit, and the new blue suit. Though, the red and blue color variants completely saved it for me. But this point still stands with all of the pre-order bonus suits. I feel like fans would have appreciated the bonus more if they gave us suits from the comics or TV shows. Most of these are original, and honestly, they're originally ass. One thing about the suits that bothered me throughout the game was the fact that most of the good suits weren't available to the end. I would have loved using some of the classic symbiote suits during the time you were actually using the symbiote suit. I found myself using the classic suit through my entire playthrough, which wasn't bad. I feel like the color variants really did save my time using these suits. 
Speaking of color variants, again, who's in charge of the creative direction for these suits? Because some of these colors are like super bad. Mustard yellow 2.0 suit, ketchup and mustard arachnite suit, whatever the hell this is. Like, I feel like Insomniac really dropped the ball with these color variants. Like, why does Miles have so many red, white, and blue color variants? Speaking of Miles, back to what I was saying about these suits. He has some of the worst suits within the game. I don't want to talk about that one. Really, the only suits that stand out are the 2099 suit, the 10th anniversary, the OG, and all three of the Spider-Verse suits. Don't forget the track suit. The rest are either really bad or just meh. Also, I'm still confused as to why Miles has legacy character suits, but Peter has none. I just feel like they ran out of ideas for Miles. I want to avoid speaking about this suit, but damn it, it's got to be spoken about. What the f*** is this sh Miles Morales original? Bro, your black and red suit is your original. Evolved suit? How about a sellout suit? Because it's nothing more than a shameless ad for Adidas. Way to ruin a perfect final scene with product placement. Like even the colors scream Adidas, not Spider-Man. And his hair is sticking out. Miles is the only dude in this city I know with this substitute teacher cut, bro. Bro completely obliterated his secret identity with one bad design choice. The mask looks like a prototype mask he just threw on, no design whatsoever. The only redeeming factor about this suit is the shoes, and even those look bad too. Looks good. Peter, quit lying to that man, you know it looks ass. Another problem I have with the suits in general is the fact that there's still the obstacle of the game overriding the suit that you have on with the default one. Now this happens with the symbiote suits, but personally I don't care about that because it fits the story. But there's a point in the story where you have to save MJ from Craven with Harry, and at the time I had the classic suit on. It's the suit I've been using since I was able to change it from the beginning. Once Peter arrives with Harry, he's automatically wearing the default advanced 2.0 suit. Okay, why did we need to do that? Now, this isn't a really big problem. It's only for like 15 minutes and it's a gateway to getting the symbiote suit. But personally, why just not have the symbiote suit cover the suit you already have on? It happens again once you take the suit off, which again, I get it, but PS5 technology, why just not have it cover the suit you already have on? I only bring this up because it takes me out of the immersion a little bit. One thing I hope for New Game Plus is that they get rid of the lock suit things, especially for the Venom boss fight. I know tons of people would love to use certain skins to fight Venom with. Shoot, I know I would. Also, Peter's spider legs. Like, come on. I know you see how extremely weird this is with his legs just appearing from his back. Sure, he explains how he created them by mentioning Doc Ock's octo legs, but at least Doc Ock had holes on his back insinuating where they come and retract from. Where do Peter's legs come from? His back? Where are his holes? Give him a backpack. I know they know it looks really weird. Like even both of Peter's iron spider suit and his superior spider suit have backpacks insinuating where his legs come from. And you might be thinking this isn't a big deal, but it kinda is. Because again, where are they coming from? This could have all been fixed with one explanation too. Just say Peter's been fooling around with programmable matter. What, what happened to that anyway? That really could have been some dope technology being used from both Spider-Men. Continuing our journey into the aesthetics, let's move into the story. Spider-Man 2's story is great. I enjoyed what it was trying to tell, but in some aspects it fell flat. Spoilers, by the way. One aspect is the main villain of the game, Venom. Sure, it was cool to see Venom, but a part of me wanted to see more. In this game, it seems like he plays the role of Carnage and Null, almost as if he's the king of the symbiotes. He's able to grow wings and spread his splooge throughout the city. Why, why did I just refer to that as splooge? But from what I remember from his comics, Venom has never done any of this. Actually, I think he was a loser on his planet before coming to Earth. From every chance we get to see of Venom, it's not much. He shows up, messes with Peter, and leaves. Maybe if we got more scenes of how he came to be, maybe even a backstory on his planet, but it really does feel like he's shoehorned into the story. Another thing I wish we got to see more of was the symbiote suit. It takes Peter about one to two days to be fully corrupted by the suit. And okay, that wasn't long. It feels like we didn't get to spend that much time with the suit. 
After taking the suit off, Peter beats himself up about being mean to Harry, but he didn't really say anything. Sure, he lashed out and told him to pop more pills, but that was it. We never see these two get into an argument about Peter keeping the suit from Harry. The conflict between them is super thin. To me, I honestly feel like Miles had the better art than Peter, just from it being more apparent. Insomniac did this problem where they decided to show and not tell the aspect of Peter's arc. The art of showing and not telling definitely works within this story with how they were able to introduce Craven, who's a complete badass in this story, kudos to that guy. But throughout the story, we're constantly reminded about Miles' trauma. Though I wouldn't compare this to Peter directly because Miles had a trigger throughout the story with Martin Lee being loose, I just wish we would have gotten an aspect of telling and not showing with Peter's gripes throughout the story. While playing with the symbiote suit, Peter is constantly mentioning how he feels like a better Spider-Man, but there's no instance in the story where he should feel like he's doing better than he actually is. There's never a point in the story where he does something better in the symbiote suit than he would do in his normal suit. Now you can see throughout the game, Peter is constantly slacking. He almost gets buried alive by Sandman and nearly has to sacrifice those citizens on that roller coaster. Maybe you could allude to that this is what he meant, but again, I think the story should have been more apparent with these things. It low-key makes it seem like Miles should have been the one with the symbiote suit. It would have made more sense with him. Other than that, I feel as if the story was pretty solid. I just wish Peter had some more apparent development and conflict throughout the story. All right, so let's talk about the three things I disliked about this game, and that definitely could have been better. One thing being the free roaming relationship between the heroes in New York. So while completing different crimes throughout the city, you may be accompanied by a certain hero to help you finish that said crime. These heroes may include Miles, if playing as Peter, Peter, if playing as Miles, Wraith, and Harry. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this addition to the game. It makes the world feel more alive, but the more I do it, the more repetitive it gets. One thing I would have done to make this better was implement a call mechanic. Say I'm about to raid a hunter base, but don't want to do it on my own. Or I'm about to stop a symbiote base or break a Sandman crystal. I can use my phone, the same phone I use to access the Friendly Neighborhood app, to call a hero to help me with my mission. This would have made the world feel more alive and less repetitive from the heroes just spawning in when you approach the crime. Another thing I really don't like about this game is how repetitive some of the missions become. They start to feel like a chore. There's the side mission where you chase those metal birds around the city, and it gets pretty dull the fifth time you do it. There's the photo ops, which are somewhat still fun to do. There's hunting spider bots, which is something you can do on the way to another story or side mission. The main problem I had with the first two games was the fact that these side missions felt like I was just running errands. They were essentially just fetch missions. Go here and get a multitude of different items for a prize is essentially what these missions sum up to be. One side quest that I really enjoyed and wished there were more of was the hunter bases. These were so in depth compared to the ones from the first game. You actually had the opportunity to sabotage enemy bases and were even tasked to find the base themselves as well. The only problem I have with these bases is that you can't replay them which is weird because that option was in both of the original games. One more thing to add, the significance of the Spider-Men. They essentially both play the same, same moves, same gadgets. I think it would have been dope to at least differentiate the fighting moves and gadgets between the two. I don't know, maybe have Peter do more crazy experience stuff like the sledgehammer and extending the web quick and have Miles do more flashy grounded moves since he's still a bit new to the whole Spider-Man thing. The unfinished and the unfinished masterpiece of Spider-Man 2 comes from how much content was left out of this game. It's a tad bit frustrating that these weren't added during launch. After beating the game, you're able to keep your symbiote suit, except it takes on the appearance of the anti-venom suit, which is white. This turns your tendril abilities white. Now this is cool if you're using the anti-venom suit or any other white suit, but when I use the black symbiote suit, the tendrils still stay white. Now here's my question for Insomniac. What went wrong? Literally the web color of the suit changes. Why don't the tendrils change? Good thing about that is that it's just a simple fix. It's mostly just a cosmetic really. Should be fixed within the next quick post-launch update. What the hell? Hey yo, what the f 2024? To change the colors of my tendrils? 
2024 to change the time of day? 2024 for New Game Plus? Ah! You see what I mean by an unfinished masterpiece? This game took five years to make, and you're telling me that they couldn't put New Game Plus or time change within the launch? Though this is one of my favorite games ever, it's still a pretty fun play, but without me sugarcoating it, this game shouldn't be $70. It's unfinished. I mean, I literally 100% the game if there's no special suits like I'd get in the previous two. No time change, which were, again, in the previous two games at launch. No new game plus, no mission replay, and no tendril color change. Also, there's no base replays. What were they expecting us to do when we finished the game? And whose idea was it to make the challenge missions miles only? Like the only replayable thing you can do post story and you can only use one Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2 is far from perfect, but I still consider it a good time. The game has tons of heart, combat is still addictive, the web swinging is dare I say beautiful, it was just taken out of the oven too soon. And I trust Insomniac will put it back in and let it cook some more. That, that sounded better in my head. Hopefully we get some DLC announced for the game because this game is far from being completed. Anyways, I'm gonna go swing around for another three hours until new game plus is added.